Yeah, could be anywhere between 250 milligram to one gram, three to four times a day. Exceeding this dosage can result in side effects. If it's a ginger root, this is how the dosage goes. For children between the ages of two and six years, not more than two milligram of the ginger root in a day. For adults, not more than four grams of ginger root in a day. For pregnant women, not more than one gram of ginger root in a day. Let me just take you a bit back. Um, becoming a bishop, uh, did it come to you as uh, what you have been expecting? Or was, was it a shock to you? Uh, I, I mean, today now, uh, the politics of becoming what or becoming this in the church is mm. on the very increase. As at that time, uh, were you expecting to be a bishop? Mm. What? brought about uh, the interest, what brought about uh, uh, what makes you to be a primate or a bishop in the first place? <laughs> I'm laughing because if you follow my story, yes. <laughs> when I was elected bishop, it wasn't to, uh, nobody in that situation will ever be thinking of becoming anything. I never, I never asked for. I didn't even expect. Just imagine, you are, you moved, you sat in a place, a hard place for 12 years. And after more than 12 years, you are moved back to the parish. And as soon as you are trying to settle down, at least to, at least to enjoy some goodies of uh, parish life. Uh, they throw you to another distance. From that one, they push you that you go back. <laughs> and the people coming to fight for me knew the situation I was in. They were not fight. They were even fighting that I may be brought back as an HDK in the parish. But I have chosen to be where God wanted me to be, and I wasn't expecting anything more. I, 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 when I went back, I settled back to the school routine uh, and doing our manual, man, manual job, uh, do, uh, building here and building there and uh, repairing here and repairing there and make, try to see that the, the students uh, have uh, some comfort to do their study. That was my, my preoccupation. I never expected. And if anything, there were bishops who, who wouldn't even want it to, to be. So it is even contrary to what, some, what human beings would, would desire. Even what I didn't even know. God did it. It was a surprise. And I, if it is a, by choice, I wouldn't have chosen to go to Gombe. I would have looked for some of these uh, <laughs> juicy <laughs> places <laughs> and, and go. Why, why should I go from one suffering to another? <laughs> so, uh, so, and the same thing with the, this primacy. The Lord knows. He knows my heart. I never expected... I never asked or campaigned that people should do this or do that in order that I may be the primate. I, even when, I, when it was mentioned to me that this is what uh, some people are thinking, I, I said, look, I, 
am the servant of the Lord. I am ready to serve whoever the Lord brings to that place. I don't look at myself as having any qualification or anything. I, never, I, I was not praise, pressurizing and wanting to be. As if I have my own agenda. I don't. God did this. Even till the point of election and the, after the election, I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even believe that it, <laughs> it, it was, was it, it was happening. And what do I really know to do? You will have uh, some stamina now to before you can. <laughs> but I'm, I am a servant, and I want to just do my work with every humility and grace and yet with the love and firmness that God gives. I'm not coming as somebody who has answers for every question. I'm not have, coming as somebody who you know, I'm already this, already that. No. I just want, this is an opportunity for me to do my ministry. I am an evangelist, a missionary. And that is what I want to remain. That's what I want to do to fulfill my ministry. Because when the Lord shall return, that is what I will answer for. I can't answer for another person. I will answer for what he has given me to do. And within this opportunity he has given me, I pray that he will give me the grace to, to hear him and to stand for him. I wouldn't want to be deceived. And I wouldn't want at the end to lose my call and my place in him and the peace I have with him. I wouldn't want to lose it. Because that's my joy. If I lose him, what, who, what am I laboring for? What am I for? What game will I have? So, uh, I'm a team. I love team playing. I love team work. With all humility. But it doesn't mean that I'm stupid. I love relationship and I will want to work with the archbishops and bishops as my brothers with the, in this holy calling and with this great re responsibility. I will want us to work together with all our clergy and our laity and let this church know the joy of being in the Lord. And the love and peace of being brothers and sisters here. So that when this life is gone, it's over. I, I will, I will I, like Paul, I will say, Lord, I have fought the fight. I have kept the faith. What awaits me is the crown of glory. And that's what I want to see. Uh, that's what I will also encourage my brother and bishops and bishops to, to do. Let us focus on the one who has called us and that ministry which he has given us. Every other thing will fall in place. Mm, that's good. Chris, some <laughs> minutes ago you talked about this spirit of Babylon and you, that's when discussing your vision for the Church of Nigeria. Mm. We as Anglicans are aware of this revisionist agenda that seems to be penetrating mm. worldwide Anglican communion. So our question now to you is how do you intend to manage this spread? Because it's really eating deep and as much as we still look at it as the thing of the West, it is beginning to penetrate into our church, even in Church of Nigeria. So Your Grace, can you shed light on your how you want to go about handling this issue of revisionist agenda? Uh, thank you so much. Um, we are not surprised. This is the end time. This is the perilous time. And uh,
the Lord made it clear that if care is not taken, even some of the elect <laughs> can be deceived. We thank God for the legacies of my predecessors. From Baba Adeti Loye, who focused on mission, followed up by Baba uh, Akiola in mission and defending this faith, contending for this faith. And Baba Oko, who has consolidated the work and helped the diocese, the missionary diocese, to take their place and be able to struggle to stand. And the other infrastructures and uh, things that God has brought into place by their vision, ministry, and labor. And I believe that the best way to tackle any false teaching is by teaching the truth. Preaching the wholesome word of God. And applying our lives to the same. And making sure that we, it, it may not be easy, that we walk the narrow way. And that means sacrifice. That may mean suffering. So, as far as we are concerned, you see this word. It will be over <laughs> unless the Lord calls us home, our desire is to stand by the authority of the word of God and maintain this heritage that we have as Anglicans and to teach and live by, by the principles of this word of God. And in order to do that, our main problem is not even the revisionist or this or that. It is the sincerity of our own heart and our commitment to the Lord. The issue has to do with who are we serving and who are we committed to. Look, as the, this thing, you cannot stop the bed from flying over your head. But you can stop it from making a nest upon your head. If this, if we will rise up as one man in unity, in faith, in love, and readiness to serve and walk with God in this perilous time, with all that it will take, let me tell you, the revisionist agenda will not stand. It will not stand. Thank God for Lambert 1998 resolution of 1.10 that upholds the dignity of human sexuality and marriage as between one man and one woman throughout their life. A lifelong union and the rejection of the revisionist agenda of say of who they are new human sexuality of homosexuality lesbianism even now bestianism and other things that are happening and it is increasing we have we the stand of the church of nigeria is that we shall not serve balia we will not be drawn to their philosophies. We will not bear their name. And we will not pour their libation. We will not follow their way. Look at... All, uh, all my life I, I have ministered in the north here. 
And I have had occasion to stand to defend this faith. To live it out. And to proclaim this gospel. And to stand by the word of God. And I have seen Jesus prove himself over and over again. Even protecting me. Assassins. Robbers have pointed gun at me. And pulled the trigger three, two times. And it did not fire. God protected me. He became a shield. It is by, the, by believing him here. I have lived among the Muslims and they have looked upon me to see how these Christians are living. Will I now, knowing the context where God has called me, now begin to, because I want some goodies from uh, Uyibo, or that I want to please somebody, Or a group, I will now put aside this word of God. And the thing that I have now become wise, I am now more educated, I am now more enlightened. Thank God. I have sat in class with some of them. And I have seen that they don't know more than we do. If anything, we have the real thing. St. Cyprian said, a man cannot die for a shadow. If a man will die, he will die for a real thing. The real thing is Jesus. And he has never failed us. He has been true. And we will stand for him. Who loved us and gave himself for us. So, not only are we going to say, ah, we, we, we will stand, we will defend. No. We, the focus of our ministry has to be on the family. On the family. Because raising a healthy family in the fear of God, nurtured in the word of God, built up in the faith of Christ, will also mean that we will be raising a healthy church. A witnessing church. A believing church. A church that can stand in times of trial. That's why when this uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis came, I said, Lord, is it everywhere that I go that this thing, it will always be... <laughs> I said, we are, we are already, already used to it. Lockdown. That's, that has been our experience in the Northeast. The chairman of Michika that was slaughtered is just one out of many. I have lost one of my pastors, Pastor Bello. Who was going to church to service, to have service with the, with the members? Eh? In Lobose. He was traveling from, going from uh, Lobanshi to Lobose. He fell into the hands of the Hudawas. They decapitated him. We had to go and pack his body with the Bible, the prayer book, and every other thing, and his bicycle. We carried him and went and buried him. We lie now, having passed through all this. Now you will want me to be more modern. Brethren, it is Jesus or nothing. It is the word of God or nothing. If we will die, let us die for the real thing. Let us die believing him. If we will suffer, let it be because of our faith in him. And there is no going back. And if any pastor <laughs> thinks that he can eat of the table of the demons and also come 
to share in the table of the Lord, I am, there is no place in this church. We will walk as the house of bishops to see that this church is kept pure and kept faithful to the Lord. And that, that, is, that is what we are believing God for. Uh, so, um, as far as uh, revisionist agenda is concerned, it has no place in the Church of Nigeria. And the, the same thing we will stand for in any other ecumenical organizations that we are belonging. Any organization that is not ready to hold to the authority of the Word of God and this gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and faith in Him and the heritage of the saints. We will not be part of that organization. And the same thing we will take to GAFCON, the same thing we will take to any other ecumenical fellowship which we belong to. Uh, anyone that is not ready to, to stand with us, it is not a must. One with God is always a majority. Yogis, um, you just said something. You said unity of purpose and unity, uh, oneness of heart is mm. what will be used to defeat the revisionist agenda. But I guess that brings me to this issue of autonomy in the Anglican Church. You know, it's an issue that keeps coming up of how, how autonomous are the dioceses and how autonomous are the bishops in taking certain decisions on their own apart from the decision that was made maybe as a house of bishops. So what, how does it work? Can you enlighten us a little on this issue of autonomy? Thank you. Um, you see, we need to understand the structure of the Anglican Church. The Anglican Church is episcopally led, but it is synodically governed. The bishop is looked upon as the leader, but he does not operate in isolation. It, it, it does not mean that he, he, he is an authority to himself. The authority he is exercising is delegated authority from the Lord. And because we are synodically governed, the bishops exercise their authority and leadership in what we call collegiality. It is also part of the synodality. What do we mean? When it comes to taking decisions that border on the life and ministry of the church, we come as a body with the representatives of both the clergy and the laity and the bishop. We sit together according to Acts of the Apostles chapter 15 when there was issue of how do we treat the Gentile believers. The church met and took decision and based on that letters were written to the churches and it was agreed on what they should observe and what they should do and not do. And the bottom line is we are saved by faith in Jesus Christ, by the grace of God. And so let nobody put anything or take away anything from it. But there are things that we must avoid. Worshipping idol, eating food offered to idol, uh, immorality and other things. He said, these things we must run away from. Okay. So, in the Anglican Church, there is this collegiality among us as bishops. 
my autonomy. When we talk of autonomy, it is that you have the right in your diocese as helped by God and as led by the Holy Spirit and by the authority of the Word of God to guide your, your, your diocese on mission, evangelism, church planting, development and organizing the worship and services of the people. In that uh, this thing, even coming to the worship of the, of the diocese, the bishop is the chief liturgist of his diocese. And the same autonomy, the same authority he has, he bequeaths to the vicars of the, of the parishes. And that's why when he installs a, a, a vicar, he says on that prayer desk, he says, take this, which is mine and yours. So the vicar is there representing the bishop, representing the Lord. The bishop is representing the Lord. So, as far as organizing that parish is concerned, the bishop will not be jumping into the parish to tell them what to do every week. Even they may decide to build, they may decide to contribute, they may decide to establish a school, isn't it? But they have to clear with the bishop and the diocesan board. And any priest that goes contrary to the directives of the bishop has already lost his license. The same thing with us. When we are consecrated bishops, we swear an oath even before the primate. Hmm? And the question is, will you take your place in the governing of this church? And you say yes. So, your autonomy is only the autonomy to exercise that legitimate ministry that the Lord has given to you. But when it comes to supporting the church and building together and working together, you have to take your place in the council. You have to be part of the college, collegiality of the bishops. So, as uh, the African this thing will say, I am because we are. And because we are, I am. Each of us bishop is made by this church. And the same house of bishop that elected us as bishops has also, look at the constitution, has also the right by two-third of their vote, they can even move you, even when you say you cannot move from that diocese. Are you hearing me? So, when it comes to autonomy, I would encourage us to understand it as the autonomy to do the will of God. Our freedom should not be used to create problems or think that we have arrived. For none of us is sufficient. So, I will I'm, I will I'm looking forward to working with my brothers and my fathers as a collegiality of bishops so that we will build the household of faith. We want to look at uh, GAFCON. GAFCON is getting more and more expan uh, in expansion and uh, more dioceses are coming. But there are some dioceses uh, who seems not to have break away completely uh, from the West. Mm -hmm. And so, and these are possibly due to issues of financial uh, assistance they are getting or whatever. Uh, what is the Church of Nigeria going to be doing to see that this kind of things is reduced? If somebody is following uh, this direction, it should totally be following that direction. Anyway, I think that uh, GAFCON partly was founded by or 
has a strong support from the Church of Nigeria. In collaboration with our brothers in Uganda, in Tanzania, in, uh, in uh, Kenya, and uh, you know, um, in other parts of Africa. GAFCON came as a rescue mission in order to bring together the, those who are not happy with the way the church in America, the uh, uh, Episcopal Church in America and the, um, the uh, other churches in the West, how they have deviated from the word of God and upholding another gospel which is not the true gospel. And we said no. We are not going to go that way. And uh, But it happens that they are well endowed. They are well resourced. And when Baba Akiola and uh, other fathers of the church started speaking. They said uh, they, are, they are just making noise. They didn't take us seriously. They didn't think that we can stand. But one thing we have come to realize is that anything that is of God shall last. Unfortunately, some of our, just as you may have rightly observed, some dioceses, uh, because when you are talking of dioceses, uh, my mind is going to, is it dioceses in Nigeria that you are referring to, or dioceses in other parts of Africa or the world? Uh, because uh, the present uh, uh, chairman of, uh, of GAFCON, is the uh, presiding bishop, the, uh, the primate of uh, Akna, eh? Folly Beach, at Bishop Folly Beach. And uh, the secretary general of GAFCON is uh, our own, um, at Bishop Benjamin Kwashi. So we are still neck deep <laughs> in, in, in the functions of GAFCON. And so, we, the Church of Nigeria will stand with GAFCON. Even though some of our sister churches are not as resourced as the Church of Nigeria. I will not be mentioning names. The, and the West have already known that weakness. And because they have related to us for a very long time, in fact, they, are the, they send the missionaries that founded some of us. So they know where to pull. Uh, so that is how some, some of those that are not well resourced, they are going from the back. It's like the group is going and then you follow from the back and be catching the weak ones. Uh, while the strong ones are in the front, you are busy gathering those ones that are at the back and then confusing them. And the same thing may even be happening in the Church of Nigeria. Maybe some of the bishops may be tempted for lack of resources to be bought over. But as far as we are concerned, it cannot happen in the Church of Nigeria. And that's why we thank God for the uh, for Baba Oko establishing the um, uh, Saint Matthias Fund. That has helped to stabilize some of us, and we will see that we pursue it. Um, when I take my place in the Council of the Primates in the Pri Primates Council of Gafcon. Um, I will think and work with my uh, brother and bishops and, uh, and the primates to see what we will do, how we can raise funds to help 
the, uh, the these uh, our brethren, uh, so that we will be able to um, uh, uh, have unity of purpose and also move together. Uh, so I think um, we will not compromise our stand. We will uphold the uh, 2008 uh, Jerusalem Declaration and 2018 uh, reaffirmation and all the conventions and the agreements uh, that we have made. Uh, we will see that we build, uh, we keep on supporting GAFCON and uh, working together with them. I think we, we've heard it much enough about the church, about your vision, about your plan for this church. Um, just a little digress to our ACNN TV. Yes, sir. We thank God for what we've done so far. We want to know your attitude to the station and are you satisfied with that performance so far? And that will lead us to our problem, funding, as well as the Advent collection. Um, I took that one up with the last primate about the Advent, and he did promise that the last uh, standing committee which did not take place will be able to impress on the bishops to turn in those funds for us. Our Father, what is your take on this? All right. Thank you. I think that ACNN was a vision from God mm. given to Baba Oko and Bishop Oko. Yes. And which God in his own way has used some of the members of the church to to support to bring it to where it is okay. and uh, we appreciate this team that is working now um, what we were looking for in Sokoto was in our Sokoto so um, and we are indeed very grateful um, if it were not ACNN, how would we have coped with relating to our members during this COVID-19 crisis? You have made us proud and we are indeed very grateful. Um, I think you, what you are asking is, what will be my take? My take is that we will give you all the support that you will need. And as much as the Lord will help us. Um, things are getting better. Uh, even this studio. We didn't know that we will be here by now. And um, I believe that by the grace of God, we will build on that. The standing committee had taken decision. Uh, or rather, the, the, Episcop the uh, House of Bishops had taken a decision which the, we related to the standing committee. And that was to, uh, to take Advent collection of 2019 and the intention is that it will be used to um, help uh, equip and uh, facilitate the uh, production and the work of ACNN. Uh, we are, if not the the COVID-19 COVID uh, issue and the challenges arising from that, um, uh, we, we, we would have taken steps to um, make good of that promise. Uh, so, um, 
as soon as this gets over and we are settled, we settle down to to walk. I am believing God that we will, by the grace of God, um, do what we ought to do, and um, we will still need the help and support of the diocese, um, and then I think whatever is there, appropriate decisions will be made. And uh, SCNN will play much more major roles in the life and ministry of the Church of, the, of Nigeria, not only within Nigeria, but across the globe. Our intention, by the grace of God, is that our focus in ministry our focus in mission, our focus on evangelism and the teaching of the word of God and discipleship will be driven through you. In fact, we are expecting that the focus of our ministry being mission will not just be anyhow. We will focus on Africa as our centerpiece in mission. And then, we may end up organizing, mobilizing the church, mobilizing the church, with the worldwide church, onto mission. And I am believing God that it is not just uh, GAFCON and this thing. The church of Nigeria will also have to uh, mobilize both within and outside for the work of mission. This is the end time push as we prepare for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Your Grace. And uh, we'll just take the last uh, break before we end this program as we just have one or two questions to ask His Grace before we wrap up finally. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. I know you've been enjoying this uh, uh, interview with the new primate of the Church of Nigeria. Uh, it's been a lengthy one, but it's been an uh, encouraging and inspiring time with him. And uh, Your Grace, we stopped at uh, uh, ACNN. And let me say that it, there has been a lot of agitations from Anglicans, uh, especially in Nigeria, to know when ACNN will be on uh, some other popular platforms that they already have in their homes, DSTV, Star Times, some even ask on Go, for Go TV, for Nikon Sat, and different things. Uh, wh what are your steps, and what will you encourage people for now? Anyway, I I thank God that SCNN as the as at the point where you we are now is not where we started and um we are growing uh and by the grace of god with um, resources being made available and uh the the, uh, the uh, as they would say all things being equal we are trusting god that SNN will get into these other platforms, uh, DSTV, uh, Star, um, uh, this thing, uh, and other platforms. We we are hoping that we will be able to uh, to get that already. Work is uh, already being done, and uh, we are hoping that in due time we will get it uh, get them connected but as as it is now with what we are experiencing now um i will want to encourage every anglican family to own the um acnn decoder as of now it is about 12000 naira and once you 
pay that and you get it and install it, you will not be paying subscription. It will be there, it is, uh, it is free. So I would want to encourage our people to, uh, to, to get the, uh, the, this thing and uh, install it. Um, uh, you can inquire from the, the assistant office or the, the vicar of the church and um, uh, also you can contact us in Abuja here directly and that will be made available. And, uh, but apart from that, there, there may be other satellite stations or areas to connect us to the different parts of the country, which may be worked upon. Uh, and I'm hoping that, by the grace of God, uh, SNN will grow uh, more and more and uh, be able to reach uh, not only within Nigeria, but across the, across the world. It is our desire, just as our motto says, uh, proclaiming the undiluted word of God. That is what we stand for. And that is what we are working on. And um, uh, but as of now, please tune in, especially in this challenging time. Tune in uh, uh, to ACNN and other platforms that you can key in, like uh, VM Africa and um, other platforms. Key in, tune in, and follow the services. And what is happening now really means that the church may need to rethink the way we do ministry. We have seen that the pattern of church worship and services and ministry that we have now can easily be disrupted by the worldly system. It only takes the decree. A statement by uh, the, the politician. And we are put in, dis in disorder. So, I am believing God that this is also a, a learning process. And in this new evolving process, SCNN will play a key role in the ministry of the church. Whether we like it or not, we cannot do without it. And so, we ask for your support, we ask for your prayers, and we ask that you patronize this station. And God will bless you as you do so. Yeah, it's one of the challenges that ACNN has faced in time past is this issue of this disconnect between the ACNN and, and some of the dioceses, especially the rural dioceses, you know, where ACNN has been calling most of our dioceses to equip their media outfits and ensure that they can also feed the station with information from their rural dioceses. But this has really been um, challenging. So coming back to this whole COVID-19 crisis, it's, it, it brings to mind, the best to mind that it's essential that the media outfit of every church and the dioceses are well equipped. Do you have any plan or any intention to educate the clergy of the Diocese of Abuja and how uh, do you have any plan to equip them or equip the churches you know to ensure that when such crisis arises again the church is ready to actually still reach its members in their homes um, thank you I think COVID-19 came as a surprise came as a flood. We never prepared for this. But be it as it may, I am seeing it as a learning process also. Because um, we need to train and retrain. And in fact, both the communication desk and the media will have to work out a strategy. And if you can give us a proposal uh, to actualize what you are expecting of the 
dioceses. I will discuss with uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, my br uh, fathers in God, the, my brother bishops, and uh, we will see how we we, we get about it, uh, because this is real. Uh, some of us, the the experience of this uh, not worshiping and not allowed to even gather. You gather, you are arrested. Uh, has shown us that ministry has changed. The pattern and mode of ministry must change. And uh, I think that um, after the, this experience, we will sit together to work out the modalities as to the way forward. And your input will be very uh, helpful. Okay, your grace. Uh, there is a big question that a lot of people have been uh, itching to hear, mm. and that is how many dioceses you plan to create. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, all right let me put it this way i believe that my work in the main may have to be with do with consolidation along the line there may be new things being introduced but sustaining what is there building up the structures that will make this church grow stronger and funding and the financing and being self-supporting and sustaining and being able to carry out our mission to the world will be our focus. Part of that consolidation will be to help the needy dioceses to stand. But I have also realized that you cannot engage in mission, church planting, training of pastors, and nurturing the believers without the, the, the as the church grows, there is need for us to expand. As of now, I cannot tell you the number of dioceses that will be created or, or so, but we, uh, this is the decision that the uh, House of Bishops, the Episcopal Synod, and the, the General Synod will take. So when, it, when the time comes, we will do the needful. Uh, so, uh, but we will see that uh, we consolidate, build up, and strengthen what is on the ground, and um, also uh, put, you know, put in, uh, build up the structures of this church, that will, the institutions, so to say, uh, that will help the church to function uh, facing the challenges of the future. Mm. Okay, we have to run off. What will be your cash freeze for the church? During your tenure, decade of the reign of God, decade, decade of, of the reign of God. I want to appreciate all our fathers in God, the bishops and that bishops, uh, for their support, overwhelming support. We are encouraged whenever we look back and see from across the country, prayers, text messages, encouraging words, we are encouraged. We are also encouraged by the clergy across the country, from all over. We have received text messages, prayers, are being, and we literally feel it. We also appreciate the laity. And uh, this church is greatly endowed. In fact, working in this small committee of liturgy and spirituality, I, we have not even scratched the surface of the endowment that we have. Human, human resources, 
ministers and ministries in this church, youth, the youth are yet to be tapped. Children ministry is such a virgin land. And ministry to the family is so important. We appreciate the women ministry. They have been a strong support and a pillar for this church. And we will always appreciate them. And I'm looking forward to uh, the, our mothers, the presidents of the diocese, working together with, with the Mama Nigeria and the, the Mama provinces to see that we move forward. And I'm looking forward to working with our youth. The youth. And I believe that they are ready for the task ahead. And we need to challenge them afresh. Uh, not only that, even those of them that have left Anglican Church and even founded their own ministries, our hands are open to receive them back with their ministries. There is place. There is a place for everyone. And I want to operate an open door. I'm a team player. None of us is sufficient. And our sufficiency is of the Lord. And I am looking forward to mobilizing everybody onto prayer and onto mission and onto supporting the work of God. Not only in Nigeria, into the African vision and into the world mission. And I'm praying that the Lord will keep us and help us move us from one level to another, to the glory of his name. Well, viewers, you have heard it all. Nothing to add, nor to subtract from what you heard from our head of church, the primate of all Nigeria. It is like the taste of the pudding is in the eating. And we have been blessed by what we've had so far. Our prayer is that the Lord should continue to give anointing to our primate mm. as he begins this joining of a decade in the primacy of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Thank you and God bless.